Hello and welcome to episode 99 of the Spare Change Challenge, getting started here on Ignition. Games are a little bit sparse at the moment, but we'll try to fill these slots up. There's one. We'll go to nine-handed if we have to, but hopefully we won't have to. Did I not get that seat? What the? That's not me, huh? <laughs> $30 stack sat down. That's not me. Okay. Good job, sir. You beat me to it. Here's a new table. We'll try that one out. Hard to believe it's episode 99. So I guess the next one will be 100, huh? Trying to think of something special to do for episode 100. I don't know. <laughs> Just play, I guess. But we'll see. Ah, but this lag, I just can't even get a sniff at a seed here. I have a dream. One day I will have four tables. Oh, that lag. Well, there's three. All right. Come on, Wranglers, we'll take you. Got it. All right, we're in business. Yeah, not feeling this table, probably. See you later. Find greener pastures there, hopefully. So I did play a little bit last night. I think I was up about 18 bucks. No big deal. Didn't play long. Pretty much the same bankroll I left uh, off with last episode. That's a 20% VPIP. Maybe there's a hidden gem on this table to play against. We shall try it. You never know. Stranger things have happened. Yeah, I looked at the games about an hour, an hour and a half ago, and man, there were a ton of games, and all of a sudden, nothing. I wonder what happened. Or maybe they're just all occupied? Perhaps. Perhaps I'm on a bad table getting random or something. Thank you for the host. I appreciate that. Unexceptional rounder. Very nice of you. If 
Thanks to those just joining. And our quest to run it up to a million today. Could be possible. Fire up for you know, 2,000 L tables and just went all ins about 50 straight times. Maybe not even that much, right? Of course, I don't have enough bankroll to even sit down on four tables. I could do one. Put it all on the line, right? <laughs> Certainly would be fun. Here's a good table. Do I have one to leave? Hmm. Yeah. Just see what happens here. Not much going on so far. Thanks for big thanks for the host there, Big Rooster. I appreciate that. We have the Ace King. We have a raise on the button. Ten Dola. Shove any flop. Collect the dough. Ship it. Ship it with the ace jack. Or just call with the ace jack and now call or shove. That would be good. Oh, wow. It's a little unfortunate. What you say? Spike to three. But that's a good sign. I mean, he just called us with king three there, right? So we got him to put it in with almost very little equity. And then got probably the best flop possible for his hand. Could just be a king. <clears throat> king and he still stacks. Oh. But that's all right. That's a hugely plus EV play for us. We just protect here, probably having the best hand. argue for an open there with the 8-6 suited with a potential fish in the small blind, but I think it's okay also to fold. This guy's stats doesn't indicate that he's a fish, but that was certainly a fishy play on his part, so we'll, we'll probably just stay here. And this guy just cold called. So either this is super strong or he's a fish, one or the other. Maybe we'll be able to see a showdown and get some information here. This guy's still in two out of four. I think this is a mandatory ship here. Eh, it's a vacuum ship. It's a squeeze that makes it even sweeter. So let's go ahead and just do that. Double fold is fine. I think the best play here is to rep the ace with equity. We 
have the Ace King again. Under the gun open. I guess there's only one play here. One hit wonder. <laughs> Certainly open that and that. This player's been pretty tight so far. So we're basically just going to take it down. Having the pair is just a bonus for us here. And we hit the two pair aces and queens with the better kicker, and we take it down there. That's good. Once again, getting it in dominating. That's awesome. Yeah, we can ISO this. Mr. Man, Mr. 37-9. 36-9. Flopping to three jacks here. Did we wrap the ace? Three way? I think this guy's flatting range includes some aces, but I think it also includes some hands he might fold. Um. Yeah. I think it might be... Yeah. I don't know. I kind of like to pick up some equity with the king of clubs, not get blown off it here, because well, these guys are both short. I think if either of them has an ace, they might check raise here. Just trying to try to pick up some equity here. Maybe we still have the best hand here. Maybe it checks down, or we hit a king or a jack, and we're good. So this board does kind of smack a couple calling ranges too if they have small pairs. So I think I'm fine with this line. We hit the backdoor flush, but we didn't hit the second part of that backdoor flush, so. Good chance we're still good here. I mean, they could have queen jack, queen ten, you know, those type of hands. He's certainly uh, wrapping in. I, I give this player credit. <laughs> I'm not going to make some kind of crazy hero call here. Good chance if he had a hand that got there on that river, he probably was going to be calling me down anyway, so I probably saved some dough. Um... Player is really aggro. So far, that is his cutoff range. However, yeah, I think we can flat this. Um, that's a board he'd be expected to see bet a lot, but not have much on. pretty terrible card for me to rep now because if he has ace high or like pocket fives he's not folding so I think ah, I'm kind of forced to just shut down good. with that kind of card any other b card besides the king and I can just bet the turn yeah I think I'm just going to give it to him here I think he's just going to have a lot of ace highs that are going to snap me off or small pairs exactly he's not folding that so um, I think we could just make that tight <laughs> non-bet. Hey, thanks for the follow. I do appreciate that. Alright, so we'll fold the king-queen in the big blind. Here. Oh, I'm sorry. And the under the gun here to the three bet. So I think we need to get off this table. Test the waters of this table. Looks like it might be a fairly new table. Full stacks, no thanks. Um, where was where was that Avengers table? There we go. Man, this lag is killing me. All right. But if it fixes the issue with the, I mean, every time they fix something on this side it seems to make things laggier. But I guess we'd rather have a site that works well that's a little bit laggy than not, right? Don't think this is a great table up here on the top right. Probably replace that one. This one we'll stick with. We got our fishy friend here and this player is raising a lot, so that might be a decent seat. I 
You can have it, Mr. 337. Assuming you're pretty tight in that spot. Mm, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe he's opening it up. Maybe he was card dead. Who knows? Three straight opens. Did he lose some kind of big pot or something? Oh, let's look through the last few hands. Player three. Don't see where he lost a big pot recently. Um, yeah. Okay. Maybe the deck's just hitting him in the face. I don't know. This guy's a pretty aggro here. We'll uh we'll empty East King. Lots of three betting going on. Normally I would just leave this table, but after this guy makes the call that he made, I don't really want to leave. Okay, getting it in with the East King. And I just disconnected there for a moment. I'm not sure why. Sorry if if I lost. Whichever, you know. So we do double up with the Ace King. We win our flip. We lost with tens in the la against tens in the last session. We win this time. Good deal. We'll take it. We're gonna win every flip from here on out, right? Okay, yeah, maybe we'll take a look at this Bluebirds. See what's going on here. Hmm. We would take this seat. This guy's short. Let's see if another short stack sits down somewhere. I don't think we can shove here versus a 15-15 on the cutoff open. I think we might be able to call. It's close. Here comes a three, right? Okay, we'll call. See, if you ask and you shall receive, right? Positive thoughts, bringing us sets. I think we definitely raised this flop just because I had the dynamics. I mean, uh, the night. Is there a word for that? How dynamic the board is? Yeah, there's tons of hands that could stack. I'm not going to slow play, and I don't think I have room to really raise small. It's going to look fishy if I raise small, so I'm just going to just shove and hope we um, hold. Not hope we hold. We're going to hold, because we definitely have the best hand here, right? If he's taking this long. Ace-9, please. Okay, club draw. That's fine. Hits his 5. Does not hit anything else, and we hold. Yes, sir. We win another one. We're going to roll with this winning thing. Keep on winning. Until we are at 10k. Standard C bet on this board. And a shutdown otherwise. Should we not improve? Yep, not much we can do here. Nor here. Sixty nine fifty five, that's good enough for me. We'll sit here. We doubled up, let's see, we we're supposed to get three bet next hand, right? That we open. But that's not going to happen this time because we've changed our ways. There we go. Positive thinking. 
and it, it does it again for us. Folding the A6. Is this the same guy that called earlier for the King 3? 1711. He must have just been some kind of tilt call. Sure doesn't have fish stats. But you know, even the biggest nets turn into fish against short stacks sometimes. I'm going to leave this table anyway. Once again, it says it's disconnecting. So if that's happening for you guys, I apologize. I don't know what's going on. Something with OBS recently. The last few sessions. It didn't happen yesterday. So very weird. This guy had three bet I was going to ship it. Because I think he's doing that wide a lot. So what does this guy's donk bet mean? Usually I think it's like either a weak ace or like a king x. Does he fold a king x if I raise? Maybe. Maybe we just make it five dollars here. Try to get him to fold a king. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, so we'll just see a showdown here. He's probably not folding once he calls, I guess. I'm not going to try and get him off a weak ace. That's not going to happen. So we f our attempt to get him off a king failed, so we'll just give up now. I'm assuming he's got a hand like 8x or ace-10 here. So, And he's not folding either of those. But I like the aggressive play on the flop. I mean, I think if he's got like king there or something, he just folds, right? So. And he could continue with an 8 and we get to show down and we're good too, so. Not gonna call with a king 6 suited. Yeah, not much we can do here. Um, I give him less credit for being light in this spot than the prior hand. Where it was button versus cutoff. Hopefully he decides to follow through and three bet me again. Unfortunately, no. Can't get that lucky. Somebody's gonna three bet me though. I feel it. There we go. So wheat. Not too sure about this table, but we'll give it a shot. I don't think there's any, he's got half my stack and then we're not going to slow play this. There's no point, right? So he's just going to put it in with the fives. Alright. Back to square one. But we'll take it. That's kind of a crazy play. Just three bet under the gun with pocket fives. I guess my stack size made him do that. The fact that I'm 36-36. Maybe. Had something to do with it. So we're leaving this table. I think I need to turn off that auto sit in feature because it's confusing me on some tables. <laughs> so how do I do that? Pull up Table Tamer. Go to my settings. Automation. Um, sit in, there we go. So I shouldn't do that anymore. All right. Maybe another not so good table here, but we'll see. This guy just called. Maybe this guy could be fishy. He's less than full stack, so we'll assume we're staying here with direct position on him. So 
We got an under the gun open. We have ace queen. We don't have a read really. So fish behind. This guy has been squeeze heavy, but he's not likely to squeeze light in this spot. I think we can flat. I think that might be the best play. Wow. Okay. He hasn't three bet yet, so I'm assuming his range would be ahead of ace queen. So really, it'd be a weird spot for him to three bet light here. So I think we just safely fold this. It's unfortunate. It's one of the reasons we don't like flatting that much, but because you can get three bet. But I'm assuming he was ahead, so it's not a big deal to fold there. <clears throat> so we'll give up on that endeavor. Big bullies. We could ISO here, but I think <clears throat> I would prefer to have high card strength when I do that. I think we're going to have opportunities to win this pot anyway. Wow. Um, yeah, so we'll fold to that min bet on a diamond all, all diamond board. Certainly going to defend the jack nine suited here. Not anymore, I guess. Yeah, so I think our potential fishy fish left here. <laughs> so we'll probably leave this table next time around. Okay, the four bet. That was a 21 and a half big blind four bet. It's a sizing that it could be a bluff. There's a pretty aggro dynamic going on right here. I think this guy's isoing pretty wide. This guy's 20 0. Wow, he's a short stack limping. I think I'm going to get away from this. It looks like a trap a lot right here. Like a limp shove sometimes. Because we would certainly do that, right? And he knows there's an aggro dynamic going here, so if he's an okay short stacker, he might be limp shoving. I might be giving him too much credit. I'm going to check back and try to pick up some equity on this turn here. Wow. I don't like to see that flop after we had the king queen, but I think I'm okay with our fold there. I don't think we can call this turn bet. I don't think we can raise. I think this board's really good for a calling range in the big blind, so I think we just get away from it. Yeah, if this guy had been like, this was like the third time he had limped in the spot, I think we just third and go the king queen. But with our, oh wow, that's unfortunate. Now nah, I just wish we had flatted. I don't think it's going to show a profit flatting in that spot with the king queen, though. If we were deeper, it certainly would, but I think it's okay. This guy's showdown. Let's see what this guy had. Eye sewing. He had ace eight. Okay. As you know, I'm not a big fan of eye sewing with ace eight offsuit, but. I guess it could be like the bottom of somebody's range for doing that. It's a pretty dynamic board. I don't have any back doors really to continue with. I think we just give up in this spot. I think a bet is okay, but I think long term it's probably better to check. Now we're just going to bet for value. I think he's going to have something that connects with this board. Maybe he'll call one bet. So I want to make him play, pay the maximum price when he does call. 
Um, I think he's mostly got just a jack, a nine, or a busted something. Do we just bet small here to get some kind of value? Maybe to induce a race? If he raises, I'm snapping it off. So I already decided to do that. Because this bet is to maybe get him to bluff sometimes. But mostly I'm just trying to get him to call with a hand. Well, that's really strange. Well, what took him so long? Was he thinking about raising with that hand? <laughs> so we'll take a chop. Whatever. It's better than having a uh, ace-10 or whatever. Right? Fold the queen-7 here. Play a little bit tight with this guy in the big blind. certainly make an argument for the limp raise with the eights here versus these two players in the blind. It's possibly an okay play, I think. I think I prefer to do it in the cutoff. I guess really it, it doesn't really matter for effective ranges. This guy three bets, it's three out of six. Of course, the two times he three bet before were I think an obvious three bet spot. So this one's not so obvious. It might be, I might just have to fold the eights if he three bets because I think he's tighter in this spot than in other spots. So if we check back and induce a bet on the turn and raise him, I don't really don't want to want to give a free card, but this is the type of board this type of player could also bluff raise. So I think we'll do that. We'll check back and raise the turn. It's a really good card because I think if he has like ace eight, Ace something, he might continue on this turn because he thinks he's picked up some outs, which he has. I think we just have to, with this SPR of four, we just have to bet and get it in here. I don't really think this is the best table. I'm going to go ahead and leave. Bluebirds. And uh, we'll just fold the queen the ten eight now. Could have made an argument for C betting that I think it's probably okay. Actually it might be best to rep the ace or the king. But I think against really tight players it's okay sometimes just to give up in those spots. Check back. Um yeah, we'll get off of this table. Probably this table, too. We're running out of tables. This one might be good. We'll give it a chance. Game's a little bit sparse at the moment. I think we were just on this table, but we'll check. No matter. Seat not available. infamous min raise. Now sometimes I almost wonder when I see this, is it a like he didn't see me limp? Or I mean I'm sorry, didn't see me open. So he's just min raising. So I always have to keep that in the back of my mind when I play these pots. Um, we flop a really dirty gut shot here in two overs. So I'm not going to continue. Especially not now. Interested to see if this can get to show down what this guy's range is for doing that. Part of his range, anyway. Hmm. 
Hmm. Must have flopped a flush or a set. We have the aces. I have a feeling this is definitely going to show down here because once he calls the turn, he's not folding the river, right? I'm, I'm just guessing he has a strong range. For the, you know, he's got an overpair probably if he's going to be calling this turn or something strong like uh, ace came with ace of diamonds. I guess he could fold that in the river. I don't want to fold. Wow. Okay. So I'm guessing that was like ace x with the ace of diamonds probably a lot. Okay. It's unfortunate to not get action with the aces here, especially when you have a 67-17 to your right. Now 71-29. But it's okay. Moving right along. We'll give this one another revolution here. This guy's forty sixteen. Over 25 hands. Stealing four out of five now. Um, this hand flops pretty good. I think we have to flat it. See that 100%? That's two out of two. I think this is a high-low low. It's a good one to bluff raise. And we could pick up hearts on the turn, hit an ace, you know, all that good stuff. Let's see here. This guy limped. Yeah, I think we can just do this. Certainly could just shove, too. But this guy's kind of all over the place. I think he's going to call this pretty often. That's not a good thing. I mean, I'm committed, so I'm not folding. Okay, so we get a flip out of it. Going to hit a queen on the river. That's eh, okay. It's a little bit weird. There, with the with the weak hand as weak as nines. Because my range there, he should be thinking, is like, Nines plus, ace, queen plus, so really he's crushed by that range. But that's good. Um, guy's really tight. So I guess we'll just flat with the fish involved. It's kind of the problem with flatting with a hand like this, though. You, you flop top pair with a decent kicker, but you're up against a tight player. So, if, I mean, if he just barrels off here, you're just beat. Out kicked. I guess that made it a little easier on us. A little bit easier on us. This guy opens immediately the hand after. Did he just lose to this guy? Let's see. Player two wins. No, he won the pot. Was there a showdown? No showdown. I think this is okay to flat. With the fish involved. It's a little bit loose. But this guy hasn't shown any aggression yet. So I think it makes it okay. I think we just lead here. I don't think we're going to check. We can't really check call. So I think we just lead for value. Um, yeah, not my, f I'm not a big fan of that turn. We could get to showdown sometimes now and win, but it's just likely somebody is either gonna have a draw that's now gonna bet or just has the ace now. like. Load with, the, with like the ace to my lead. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but I think we just got to give it up here. I like the lead. 
Just because if it's like check check and the board pairs, I can probably just. I think I could just shove, right? Because don't they just raise when they have the jack? And I can get called by worse for sure. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think with the SBR I had, it was fine. It's kind of a tricky spot. That's kind of one of the reasons you don't like flatting that hand um, out of position in the first place, right? Because if you, you flop something marginal like that, you're just like, <laughs> but then you're committed a lot, so. Sets up some awkward spots. Give up with a 7-10 here. Is this table ever gonna come up? Wow. That was some lag. I think I could shove maybe sevens plus there. Sixes probably on the would be on the border. But deuces I think with fifteen big blinds a little bit too loose. It says reconnection successful. I'm not sure what's going on with OBS. Um, if any of you are having connection problems, let me know. I'm not sure what I can do about it, but let me know just the same. Yeah, no, no big secret on what I'm doing here. All right, we will open. Even though we're so short, we have to open a king ten suited here. There's a lot of situations where we just have to put it into a three bet. We'll see. We'll see if there's a fish on this table. This guy's been pretty tight. It's just a matter of whether the math is there. Um, I think. I mean, if if I knew this guy was gonna call, I would put it in, but I'm not going to. And this is another spot that looks like my hand is strong, but this is actually minus EV to put it in here versus a 25-17. So we'll have to let the tens go. I mean, his range is just strong there. It's just jacks plus ace king most of the time. Maybe sometimes some ace queen suited or something. But if you run equity versus that, it's just it's just a losing play. Jacks is maybe okay there, but jacks is actually pretty marginal there as well. I think in the cutoff we just stick it in, but the hijack, that one seat makes all the difference in the world. We're going to have to put it in with the ace five. This guy's opened a lot in steel spots. This is three out of, what, three out of four? So we get it in with the best hand and we hold. 
<laughs> not. <laughs> we do hold. <laughs> I almost spoke too soon. Just trying to be positive. Ace is on the next hand with the fish maybe on tilt, and we have him covered. This could be a good thing. Um, this guy doesn't have to have an ace, and I think he just folds a lot if he doesn't have an ace. So we can lead him with the queen high. We'll just make it four dollars here and put the rest in on most flops. I'm not going to slow play on that dynamic of a board, even though I'm not really afraid of an ace of a spade coming on the turn. Um, I would much prefer just to get it in before a spade or something comes, just so he's not dissuaded from putting his money in. I don't have a reach strong enough to defend the queen nine here. So, I've had these connection issues. This isn't the first time. It didn't happen last session, but it did happen a few sessions before. So I'm wondering if I don't have some issue with my settings. I'll have to look at some guides on that. Maybe do another um, setup guide and maybe an alternate one. See if that works better for me. I'm not sure what I could do different. But I did reset it up recently, so maybe I made an error. Maybe there's just a, something just misset. <laughs> I don't know. Flop in the royal flush here, please. I think we have to protect our hand. We probably are good here a lot. Wow, the three bit. This doesn't look like a great table anyway, so we'll just take off. Do we barrel? I like a barrel just because we probably are good, and I don't want him just to be able to bet his flush draws, missed flush draws on the river. And I think we can get more value from those hands. And are we likely, a lot of times a jack, uh, I'm sorry, an ace or a nine is an out for us too. If he had a hand like fives, sevens, eights. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna bluff again. And he did have a jack, which is obviously in his range. A little unfortunate there, but that's okay. But he's defending with jack five, <laughs> which I guess is a good thing. Wow, this lag is insane. Makes it very difficult to get a table. I guess we can, well, we were just on that one, never mind. We were on that one earlier and it wasn't good. Let's try this one and this one. Wow, crazy amounts of lag. Try that one. Short stack just set, so I'm going to come back to this table. Wow, three bet again. Lots of three bet shenanigans. Now this guy's got a really tight range. But we got a call and a call. Wow. <sighs> okay. I guess we kind of got a call here, don't we? Price is just too good. I think we just have to consider ourselves having the nuts here. 
So this guy's got ace king, he's got ace king. But they're really, I mean, I guess this guy could have six, seven. I think we just have to get in because I just think he's got worse aces a lot here. Okay, I mean, we kind of have the nuts, so I'm just going to put it in. The nuts for this SPR, anyway, in this spot. Alright. And we do hold. That's a pretty big pot to win. That's nice. Glad we called now, right? Hey, and we get to leave that table up a dollar fifty. Good times. <laughs> we were on that one. We were on that one. Maybe this one. Look at this. It's disappointing. <laughs> um, full stacks. Okay, we'll pass. Man, this is ridiculous amounts of lag. I guess everybody else might be dealing with it too, though. So if we can control our emotions and not let it affect the quality of our play, we can benefit. There's two half stacks. Do I sit here or here? I guess here's probably better. Oh, Been on the table too recently. So I'm going to just play another five minutes or so. I'm going to keep it to an hour sessions, at least for right now, just because I think it's about all I can mentally tolerate right now. And I have some other stuff to do. But we'll certainly get back to doing some two-hour sessions at some point. again here. Four seven. I guess we want to be on this table. Yes. Yes. Sorry, player six. Don't mean a root for somebody else, but we like the uh the bad players to hang around. The unskilled players. He's not bad, he's just unskilled. <laughs> Go ahead and leave bluebirds. This guy is a, a definite fish. Um, this guy isn't necessarily a loose player, so we'll just shove the ace queen for a standard play rather than the smaller three bet. It's probably fine either way, right? So we hold again. That's an easy one. We like having easy ones, right? <laughs> Do we bet here? Well, let's min bet. Maybe get somebody to fold the king high. I'm obviously just repping a jack or a queen here when I do this. So it could get king high to fold. It's not out of the realm of possibility. We're not getting three bet this time. This is going to be two in a row for us. <laughs> it happened. Yeah, king high called. Unfortunately, this guy had king high. But I think some regs actually fold king high there. That's okay. It was a min bet. 
this were suited, I would call just because this guy's involved. But he's kind of aggressive free flop. I don't really want to. <laughs> I think he could squeeze here pretty light. I mean, he put it in with 4 7 earlier, so. Maybe we'll kind of tone down that type of play. Yeah, it says OBS disconnecting. I'm going to have to research that and see what's going on. This guy's 3 bet now twice in a row against me. I don't quite have the right price to set mine. I don't really want to stick in two buy-ins, so I'm just going to let him own me. Usually the second three bet's the, the tighter one, so the first one's the bluff, the second one's for real. So I think it would be a little bit, you know, loose for me to stick it in there. And a lot of times, I mean, just because a guy three bets you twice in a row doesn't mean he's bluffing both times, or one of the two times. It's easy to think such things. I mean, if he does it three, four, five out of six times or something, I mean, it's one thing. Um, this does not look like... I guess we have this guy, so we won't leave. So we'll play one more revolution here, here, and here. And if we can get on another table, we'll maybe play one somewhere else. Maybe on this one. Bunch of bull stacks. And we can't get in the big blind quick enough, I don't think. So yeah, we'll give up on that one. Go ahead and take the big blind here, next hand, and play a revolution there. versus a men raise you can sometimes just mix in a lot of calls here and then call and lead flops rather than shove and I think that's a good one to do it on this way you could fold hands like sevens something like that that call doesn't please me too much, but I think I have to continue, especially on the spade turn. Probably a lot of times we can pick up some outs. And I think we just hopefully he has a hand like threes or fours or fives here, or ace high, and just checks it down now. Yeah, I'm guessing he just he just has it here a lot. I mean, the only thing we're really beating is like some kind of crazy queen ten or just a guy that just decided to bluff for no reason? I'm not sure. Because a bluff wouldn't make much sense there. But I think it's better to do that and get basically have the same result and win the same amount of money versus shoving. And, you know, if he had King Jack there and calls, we we're obviously crushed on that flop. Whereas we lose only, what, seven or eight dollars by playing it that way. And if he whiffs with his king high, we're going to we're going to win probably the same long-term money. So you know, it cuts down on variance that type of thing to play it that way. So a couple more hands here. Yeah, 
and two more hands now. Oh wow, flopping the flopping the boat. Good for him. All right, we be all done. This looks like we're up. Uh, what what are we up? What do we start with? Um. 1867, so that means we're up, what, 33, 43, 47, about 50 bucks. So that's pretty, pretty good. We got it in good a lot. We lost a flip, then won another flip. So it's all good. We didn't exactly have any monster flops or anything, right? Um, so we didn't get like a ton of hands where we're just like bet, bet, bet for value. Got pretty well pwned post flop, but I think pre flop we did pretty well this session. Overall, we're happy to be at 1914. So we're up about 200 since we came back from um, WPN. So that's good. So we'll just keep on plugging along. Next episode will be 100. I'll think of maybe something special to do. I don't know what. Play a $50 sit and go or something. I, I don't know. You guys tell me what do you want me to do. I mean, probably just treat it like a normal session. Sound good? <laughs> Go from there. Um, yeah, I think of something fun. I don't know. So thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we will talk to you later. Thanks.